Hello everybody and welcome to my third video on this, the Sigma SD9. In the first video we talked about what everything was, in the second we talked about how to do everything with this camera, except take a photo. Well, that's not hard, you just push the shutter button. Just forgot to mention it. Anyway, in this video, the third one, we're going to talk about everything that's in the menu button. So to access the menu, we're going to push menu. And this screen is very hard to read upside down, so please bear with me. I'm going to scroll up to the very top, and we are just going to start at the top and go down. Okay, so to, once you push the menu button, to navigate, the cross pad is what we're going to use for navigating. OK and cancel are going to confirm uh, selections or cancel out of menu items. So the up and down buttons select different items, and then the right button enters an area to let us start doing stuff in that area. Cancel will take us out. And I think also, nope, the left button does not. Okay. So this first selection is camera info. And basically this is just a bunch of different info about what you're currently set to. 100 ISO, auto white balance, uh, image size, the high, high resolution size is 2268 by 1512. That's your pixel count. It's a uh, very small, six megabyte raw files. Uh, then you have down here the amount of free space on the CF card uh, and how many images you can take and things like that. The next option is your white balance setting and you have all the standard white balance settings that you're probably used to. Auto, sunlight, shade, overcast, incandescent, fluorescent, flash, and custom. So. If you have a custom white balance set, you can use it here. It's incredible how old some of these settings are. Like, these are all the same settings that we get basically on cameras today from 2022. Like, as I'm recording this, just yesterday I recorded the video manual for the Sony A7S III. Basically the same settings. Who'd have thunk it? Anyway, just going to leave that on audio. Auto, not audio. <laughs> This next one is set a custom white balance. So what you can do with this is, let's say you have a tabletop studio and you have a light, your light set up, you can end a white drop cloth behind it. Just take a picture of that white drop cloth. The camera will know that you're going to make that white and, it, and then you, it will, you can use the settings from that as a custom white balance so that when you use that tabletop studio in the future, you can um, just set the custom white balance for your tabletop studio and have proper colors uh, in your tabletop photos. Date and time allows you to set the date and time on your camera. Uh, so day, hour, whatever, all that jazz. This next one is language and it lets you pick between these four languages what language you would like the menu system to be in. This is quick preview, which is instant playback. So after you take a photo, do you want it to display on the LCD screen? No, for two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or until you tell it to go away. This camera is not friendly to batteries. I'm just gonna suggest leaving that off for battery preservation. And also because this screen, not that great. It's not really gonna give you the ability to see how well your photos actually turned out. This next one here is going to be exposure warning. Now this is a playback only function and what it does is it shows red over highlight blowouts. So image only or, oops, wait, that's not right. Exposure warning, here we go. Off or on. So I'm going to turn this to on and I'm going to show you what that did because yesterday I took a photo of my light bulb so that I could do this. Here we go. And you can see there, those red areas are highlight blowouts. And uh, oops, I, I guess I you know took, well, I mean, I did that, did that on purpose. But you can see that that's what it would look like in a photo with a, a highlight blowout if you set that function to on. And if we set it to off, back out, playing. Now you can see there's no red highlight over the, the highlights. This next one is the info strip. And basically, 
what this does is you can um, receive exposure info or date and time info when you play back a, um, a photo in the playback menu and hit the info button. This is the OK shortcut button and basically when you're outside of your menu system do you want the OK button to do a thing? And it gives you a few options of what you can have the OK button do. Lock and unlock the, the, the camera or screen, I forget which it is, I think maybe just the screen or buttons, anyway. Uh, mark and unmark, honestly not sure what that does. Rotate your images one direction or the other, or turn turn on and off the exposure warning on playback. That's honestly the exposure warning on playback, probably the most useful option of those. This next one is format the CF card and it allows you to erase all of the images on your CF card. Your file numbering system here, your choices are continuous or auto reset. Uh, I always recommend just leaving it on continuous because you are less likely to overwrite a file accidentally if your file numbering resets at 10,000 rather than if it resets every time you use a new folder. This is the LCD brightness and you can set it to dim, normal, or bright. Wow, dim is a lot easier to read from this angle. Anyway, uh, this is a matter of battery preservation and your lighting conditions. This next one is LCD contrast, and this allows you to have high contrast, medium, or low contrast. And again, battery pre preservation and lighting conditions, how you want this to be set. This next option is your LCD sleep. How, how long does the camera have to have the LCD screen on before it turns it off? And so I have it set to 15 minutes for this video but you have everything from 30 seconds back to the screen will never turn off if, uh, as, long, as long as there's life left in the batteries. Auto power off is how long do you want the camera to stay on before it decides to turn itself automatically, turn itself off automatically. 10 seconds up to five minutes or not at all. Matter of personal preference and battery preservation on this, honestly. I mean, yeah, CR123 batteries are a few bucks, but they do seem to last a little bit of time in this camera. The double A's are the ones that this is burning through, and um, literally, because it smells like it's on fire. And um, if you're going to uh, replace the double A's, you can get some rechargeables, and so battery preservation is not as much of an issue with this camera unless you are going on a long hike and don't want to carry 16 or 20 double A batteries with you, which I can't blame you for. This next one is going to be the key sound, off or on, Do you, or I'm sorry, off, short, or long. Do you want no sound, a short sound, or a long sound when you push a key? Next up we have the video mode, and this is NTSC or PAL. This is not for recording video. This camera cannot record video. This is for your output on your video output that's on the side of the camera. Are you in an NTSC area region or a PAL region? Uh, do you have an old analog TV that can read an analog output symbol? If so, like, how do you lift it? Tubes are heavy. Uh, anyway, um, I know there are flat screens that can receive analog symbols, signals, but any, at any rate, this really doesn't matter. You're probably not ever gonna connect this camera to a TV unless you're gonna do so just to spite me for saying that. This next one is your firmware version, and when you click right, it will display the firmware version. Version 1642 is the final, and yes, Sigma does still host this on their website for you to download. So if you have 13, 12, or earlier, you can go to Sigma's website, download 1642, and upgrade to the, the final firmware release which is really nice. Thank you, Sigma, that's awesome. There are, there are a number of camera companies that just stop hosting old firmware after some years. <clears throat> and, um, sorry, cough there. And, um, and so it's very nice when camera companies continue to support, to support their legacy cameras, even ones that are 20 years old. All right, this last one here 
is camera reset. And this allows you to reset all of your camera's functions to factory default. I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't really wanna do that. But um, if you just bought the camera and you wanna reset it so that you can set everything up exactly how you want, that's how you do it. And that is the Sigma SD9. Really like a pioneering DSLR. I think the first, this was also I believe the first mass market DSLR or the first pub commercially available DSLR with a Foveon sensor as well. So a neat little bit of camera history. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next camera manual video.